Over a hundred years ago, long before the eventual occupation of Palestine, the founding father of Zionism, Theodore Herzl, made an uncanny forecast. He predicted that if the State of Israel were to be created, anti-Semites would become the nation's biggest allies. Herzl wrote in his personal diaries that, The anti-Semites will become our most dependable friends. The anti-Semitic countries are allies. And in his 1896 pamphlet, The Jewish State, he also wrote that, The governments of all countries scourged by anti-Semitism will be keenly interested in assisting us to obtain the sovereignty we want. What did Herzl mean by this? Why would anti-Semites be the most dependable friends of Israel, which claims, of course, to be a Jewish state? As I have showcased on this channel in a previous video called How America Created Benjamin Netanyahu, some of Israel's biggest allies in the United States are currently, in fact, anti-Semites. In that video, I gave the example of Christian Zionists like Pastor John Hagee, whose claims justifying the Holocaust are clearly and extremely anti-Semitic, yet who is emphatic in his support for the Jewish state of Israel. Other examples include the avowed white supremacist neo-Nazi leader Richard Spencer, who in 2018 endorsed Israel's controversial nation-state law and said it was a model for other European nations to follow. In the past year, far-right political parties in Europe such as the National Rally in France, which was founded by a Holocaust denier, are now one of the biggest supporters of Israel in its genocidal war against the Palestinians in Gaza. So, as we can see, there are several clear examples demonstrating how Herzl's prediction has come true. Real anti-Semites are among Israel's most reliable supporters. In this video, I want to explore another facet of support for Israel and how it, too, strains belief. It is comparable to the other in its ultimate aims and its depravity of moral integrity, but it is also more of an affront to normal human decency. I am talking about the way that many Jews who do not support Israel's Zionist project have been labeled as anti-Semites. Even more galling is that, as we will see, these charges of anti-Semites against Jews are often made by non-Jews. As the occupation of Palestine has raged on for generation after generation, we have reached an Orwellian situation in which people and organizations with genuine hostility for Jews are accommodated and even acclaimed because of their support for Israel. All the while, actual Jews who happen to not support Israel are the ones labeled as anti-Semites. As we look at several shocking instances in which Jews have been smeared with the most loathsome and painful epithet, I also want to point out the failure of some progressive pro-Palestinian political leaders who have bucked under the pressure from the media and their political opponents when faced with these made-up charges of anti-Semitism. In the past few years, from both sides of the Atlantic, in the United States and the United Kingdom, Anti-Zionist Jewish activists have been ostracized and slandered by their supposedly center-left political parties of their respective countries. In the United States, left-wing Jewish democratic politicians and activists have been attacked by members of their own party for not being supportive enough of Israel. In the United Kingdom, the current labor leader Keir Starmer has been orchestrating a witch hunt against anyone sympathetic to the Palestinian cause, including Jews. It has reached a point where even Holocaust survivors have been accused of anti-Semitism telling us that, clearly, something is horribly askew. Take the example of Hayo Meir, a Holocaust survivor who spent 10 months in the Auschwitz death camp. In 2010, Meir was a speaker at an event titled Never Again for Anyone, organized by the International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network. In attendance for Meir's remark was Jeremy Corbyn, the left-wing labor MP who would go on to be the party leader from 2015 to 2020. Hayo Mayer said that political Zionism is an ideology with an eschatological view comparable to Stalinism, comparable with Nazism, hoping for a bliss state without an enemy. Mayer added that political Zionism is based on the view that the enemy must be completely wiped out, adding that it is the absolute opposite of Judaism, which is humanist and universal. Even in 2010, Mayer's comments were considered controversial. He was assailed by hecklers, including members of the Zionist Federation who tried to disrupt the event. One pro-Israel activist even flashed a Nazi salute as he was being escorted away by security. One might have expected the media to focus on the absurd and insulting treatment given to a survivor of Auschwitz. Instead, they and various political watchdog groups directed their ire at Mayer himself. The Anti-Defamation League denounced the event, writing that Hayo Mayer's speaking tour was the latest effort by anti-Israel activists to exploit the sacred memory of the Holocaust for the purpose of painting its victim, the Jewish people, as the new oppressor in the form of Israel. 
Hayao Mayer passed away in 2014, but his comments from the Never Again For Anyone event resurfaced in 2018 when they were used to defame Jeremy Corbyn, who was now serving as the leader of the Labour Party. Corbyn had long made many enemies among the British political establishment. Many of these included members of his own party. Jeremy Corbyn was not only a dedicated leftist who wanted to bring the Labour Party back to its socialist roots, he had also spent his political career as an anti-imperialist activist. Some of the notches in his belt include an arrest for protesting against apartheid South Africa and his establishment of the Stop the War Coalition which opposed the Iraq War. Having almost won the prime ministership in the 2017 election, Election. Jeremy Corbyn stoked the fears of the political establishment as well as from the media who then went on a frenzy to label him as a dangerous extremist. And one of the ways they sought to discredit Corbyn was to link him to the comments made by Hayo Mayer years earlier. In 2018, Hayo Mayer's comments were presented by the British Times in a story with the headline, Jeremy Corbyn hosted an event likening Israel to Nazis. Picking up on this theme, the Israeli paper Hayret soon after published an op-ed titled Why Corbynism is a Threat to Jews Throughout the Western World. The Sun wrote an article titled Jeremy Corbyn Refuses to Answer Questions After Revelations He Hosted an Event Comparing Israel with Nazis on Holocaust Memorial Day. The Sun only briefly mentioned that the comments were made by a Holocaust survivor and it was buried in the 11th paragraph. The damning media characterization was quickly echoed by British politicians, including members of Corbyn's own party. Fellow Labour MP John McDonnell said that Corbyn's attendance at the event had shaken the party to the core. And another Labour MP, Louise Elman, told the BBC that she was absolutely appalled at Corbyn, but she passed over the fact that she herself was in attendance at the same event. Whether or not one agrees with Hayao Mayer's comments, it should not have been controversial for Jeremy Corbyn to attend an event with a Holocaust survivor who is merely speaking of his own experience to make the case for the Palestinian cause. It is even worse, however, when the comments at the core of the controversy are manipulated and simplified for political ends. It was shameful that Hayao Mayer himself was being painted as an anti-Semite. We may condemn Jeremy Corbyn's political adversaries for doing this, but we can at least see that, for them, it was necessary to denigrate Mayer in order to take down Corbyn. The left-wing labor leader's sympathies to the Palestinian cause made him an enemy to the pro-Israel lobby. As Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's deputy foreign minister even stated, Corbyn is a real danger to Israel-British relations. But Jeremy Corbyn himself, in response to his critics, played a role in also blackening Hayao Mayer's memory. Rather than defending his attendance of the event and the words of Hayao Mayer, Jeremy Corbyn responded to the British Times, saying, Views were expressed at the meeting which I do not accept or condone. I have on occasion appeared on platforms with people whose views I completely reject. I apologize for the concerns and anxiety that this has caused. Instead of Corbyn honoring Mayer's memory and exposing the way that the Auschwitz survivor's words had been manipulated, he opted for the political expedient of expressing a mea culpa. In this, he gave legitimacy to his critics, and he also contributed to the travesty in which even non-Jews can label the words of a survivor of Auschwitz as anti-Semitic. But this wasn't the only time under Corbyn's Labour Party in which pro-Palestinian Jews were slandered. Another absurd case was the suspension of Jackie Walker, a black Jewish activist within the Labour Party. Walker's father was a Jew from Russia who moved to New York City in the early 20th century after fleeing anti-Jewish pogroms, and her mother was also mixed with Jewish and African ancestry. Jackie Walker had been actively involved in Momentum, a pro-Corbyn group within the Labour Party. But in 2016, she became the target after the leak of a private Facebook message she wrote. In response to a friend talking about the debt owed to Jews because of the Holocaust, Walker wrote back, I hope you feel the same towards the African Holocaust? My ancestors were involved in both, on all sides. Millions more Africans were killed in the African Holocaust and their oppression continues to this day on a global scale in a way that it doesn't for Jews and many Jews. My ancestors too were the chief financiers of the sugar and slave trade. So who are the victims and what does it mean? We are victims and perpetrators to extent by choice. And having been a victim does not give you the right to be a perpetrator. Walker was merely arguing that all genocides should be remembered, including the Jewish Holocaust as well as the Atlantic slave trade. And she was merely speaking from experience, as her Portuguese Jewish ancestors from her mother's side, like many Europeans of various faiths, 
had been involved in the slave trade. But after her Facebook message was leaked, Walker was subsequently suspended by the Labour Party and eventually expelled. Twisting her words, the Jewish Chronicle ran with the headline, Labour suspends momentum supporter who claimed Jews caused an African holocaust. In the usually liberal Guardian, the headline was even worse. Labour expels Jackie Walker for leaked anti-Semitism remarks. Nowhere in the article did the Guardian mention that Walker is also Jewish, but because she is also black, it was easy for the press to deny her Jewish identity. Jackie Walker's case demonstrates that even an historically accurate observation can be corrupted and made into grounds for an attack if it slightly departs from the pro-Israel narrative. But this sort of slandering of pro-Palestinian Jews like Jackie Walker or Ohio Mayor does not stop with incidents in the UK. Pro-Palestinian Jewish activists in the US have also been attacked on false charges of anti-Semitism. An example from the United States come from the contentious Congressional Democratic primary race in New York between progressive incumbent Jamal Bowman and his right-wing rival George Latimer. Like Jeremy Corbyn, Representative Bowman expressed sympathy for the Palestinian cause. He was one of the earliest members of Congress to call for a ceasefire in Gaza, and he has also not shied away from using the word genocide to label Israel's relentless assault on the Palestinians. Needless to say, these pro-Palestinian positions have placed a target on Bowman back. And as a result, the Bowman vs. Latimer race has become the most expensive Democratic congressional primary ever, with tens of millions of dollars in outside spending pouring in from the main US-Israel lobby, AIPAC, in its determination to oust the progressive incumbent. In just ad expenditures alone, Bowman has been outspent by more than 10 to 1. One of the attacks Bowman has received stems from the congressman's previous embrace of the scholar Norman Finkelstein. As many pro-Palestinian activists are acutely aware, Finkelstein has long been one of the most authoritative writers on the Israel-Palestine conflict. He is also the son of two victims of the Holocaust, with his father surviving Auschwitz and his mother the Maidanic extermination camp. Both his parents were also part of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising and his mother also later testified against Nazis after the war. Even if one disagrees with Norman Finkelstein's research and scholarship, one cannot deny that he has the right to write about the topic of the occupation of Palestine as the memory of the Holocaust is close to his heart. And to label him as anti-Semitic is a monstrous distortion, but he has long been vilified as such due to his extensive research exposing Israeli war crimes. From the website academicinfluence.com, Dr. Finkelstein is among the top 20 most influential political scientists alive today, despite attempts from the pro-Israel side to silence his scholarship and slander him as a self-hating Jew. Yet, in a parallel to Jeremy Corbyn's backtracking, Jamal Bowman was forced to walk back on his earlier embrace of Finkelstein. When critics began raising the issue, the Congress member issued a tweet saying that he wanted to apologize deeply to any of my friends and neighbors hurt by my comments. He added that he will continue to fight the scourge of anti-Semitism in our country and across the world. Like Corbyn, Bowman chose the political expedient. However, this backtracking made no difference. Months later, when former Representative Mondar Jones endorsed George Latimer, he said in a statement that he had been horrified by Bowman's embrace of Norman Finkelstein, a well-known anti-Semite. And days before Bowman's primary, even the New York Times described Finkelstein as a writer many Jews consider an anti-Semite without mentioning anything else of who he is. It is worth pausing to consider this. Bowman, Jones, and Latimer are not Jewish. Norman Finkelstein is the son of Holocaust survivors and a scholar who has made it his life's work to expose the war crimes committed against the Palestinian people. He does this not from the ridiculous desire to denigrate Jews, but, on the contrary, to honor his parents by fighting the kind of injustice that resulted in their suffering and the suffering of millions of other Jews. This is the crazy situation we are living in. The pro-Israel lobby and its allies have become so relentless in their efforts to defend Israel that they have orchestrated their most vicious attacks against Jews themselves. Bowman is not the only victim of the wrath of AIPAC, and this is hardly the first time AIPAC has ousted pro-Palestinian lawmakers. The lobby has also succeeded in ousting pro-Palestinian Jewish lawmakers in the past. In 2022, for instance, AIPAC spent about $4 million to defeat Andy Levin who was one of the most progressive Jewish lawmakers in Congress. Levin, it seems, made the unacceptable suggestion that Palestinians should have human rights. And he not only lost his congressional seat, but he had also had his Jewish identity questioned. 
Abe Foxman, the former head of the Anti-Defamation League, said Levin uses his Jewishness and respective political family name as cover for softness on Israel and anti-Semitism. Apparently, only pro-Israeli Jews can claim agency on the discourse on Israel-Palestine, and Jews sympathetic to the Palestinians have their identity and history taken away. And denying Jewishness has become the go-to attack employed by the pro-Israel apologists against the pro-Palestinian Jews. When the progressive interest group, the Jewish Vote, endorsed Jamal Bowman in his recent primary race, Congressman Richie Torres, who backs the opponent George Latimer, tweeted, Jews for Jamal is a little like blacks for Trump. If someone were to create a pro-Trump black organization and call it the black vote, it would rightfully be seen as deceptive advertising. The same should be said of the Jewish vote. Representative Torres is not Jewish and shouldn't have any business to tell Jews that they're not Jewish. But apparently, it doesn't matter. A similar attack was used against Jewish supporters of Jeremy Corbyn. A well-known Labor Party activist named John Landsman disingenuously said that the pro-Corbyn group Jewish Voice for Labor should not really be said to be part of the Jewish community. Joe Glassman of the pro-Israel group Campaign Against Anti-Semitism went even further to say that Jewish Voice for Labor should really be called Jewish Voice for Stalin, adding that they were atheist Marxist Jews sent to undermine Jewish communities. The censure seems to have reached its peak when Corbyn was replaced as labor leader with the centrist Keir Starmer. Many of the founders of Jewish Voice for Labor, including the longtime pro-Palestinian activist Naomi Wimborne Adressi, were expelled from the Labor Party under the new leader Keir Starmer. As Wimborne Adressi stated, My treatment demonstrates the hostile campaign which left-wing Labor Party members are being subjugated, including disproportionate numbers of Jewish members. And as early as June 2020, in just a few months of Starmer's leadership of labor, there were at least 25 cases of Jewish party members who were sympathetic to the Palestinian cause being investigated for anti-Semitism. It turns out that Theodore Herzl's prediction that the anti-Semites will become our most dependable friends was correct. The individuals and groups who are hostile to Jews have now sided with Israel and their support is welcomed with barely any reservations, while Jews who speak up on behalf of Palestinians are the ones vilified as anti-Semites. It is therefore important to recognize that the fight for Palestinian liberation is also a battle against anti-Semitism. Since October 7th, the leading organizers protesting against the genocide in Gaza in the United States have been Jews, with groups such as If Not Now and Jewish Voice for Peace mobilizing participants for some of the biggest demonstrations. And they have done this at the risk of being labeled as anti-Semites or self-hating Jews. The level of anger directed at Jews who support Palestinians find a historical parallel with the treatment of white participants in the freedom rights during the civil rights movement in the US. Back in the 1960s, multiracial groups of mostly young activists who rode on segregated buses throughout the Jim Crow South were frequently beaten by white supremacist mobs. According to witnesses, white civil rights activists received some of the most brutal beatings. Their support for the cause of African Americans made them traitors to their own race in the eyes of white supremacists. Similarly, in the fight for the Palestinian cause in both the United States and the United Kingdom, it is the anti-Zionist Jews who are subjugated to some of the most brutal forms of slander and hostility. They, too, are perceived as race traitors which is regarded as being especially repugnant. In videos covering recent Palestinian solidarity protests, we see numerous instances when pro-Israel mobs single out the anti-Zionist Jews for their most vicious attacks. Not even prominent celebrities are spared. Perhaps no one in Hollywood has been more viciously slandered than the Jewish director Jonathan Glazer, who, after speaking out for Gaza in his Oscar acceptance speech for a film about the Holocaust, suffered countless smears for being anti-Semitic. We must recognize these actions for what they are. Anti-Semitism because they are denying Jews of their own identity and history. Rather than being defeatist and apologetic like Jeremy Corbyn or Jamal Bowman, it is time to go on the offensive and call out the anti-Semitism on the pro-Israeli side. For the rest of us non-Jews, we must applaud the actions of courageous Jews standing up to the principle of never again for anyone, and for upholding the most beautiful aspects of Judaism. As it is written in the Talmud, whoever destroys a soul, it is considered as if he destroyed an entire world, and whoever saves a life, it is considered as if he saved an entire world. 
Whether it is the murder of one or tens of thousands of Palestinian civilians in Gaza, these Jewish activists are fighting to save an entire world. And it is only with the shared solidarity of Muslims, Christians, and peoples of all faiths from all over the world that Jews and Palestinians will finally reach the promised land. In the final fight for Palestinian liberation, there is room for everyone at the rendezvous of victory.